My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And what I want to talk about now in the compression series, because it's probably in the title, is what do we, oh yes, why does it get hot? <laughs> you might have heard of the Bernoulli principle where basically when you compress a gas, you change its volume, its pressure increases. Uh, if you compress it so your volume goes down, your pressure increases and so does your temperature. I don't know if I've done the video on this, I can't remember, but the best way to remember it is PTV, pressure, temperature and volume, and you think of it like a seesaw. So if you want to know pressure, you hold that still, constant pressure. If you raise the temperature, the volume raises as well. Think of this like a seesaw, like that with a fulcrum in the middle of it. Right, so this, your seesaws like this, like so, and this is your fulcrum in the middle, your pivot point. Temperature goes up, volume goes up. Um, if you heat up a balloon, very gently, because balloons are quite fragile, you get a balloon, you heat it up, and the volume, the balloon will expand, maintaining the same pressure, which is near kind of true. The Bernoulli principle is the underlying facts. There is a lot more to this. Um, this is just the underlying principle. There are things that contradict this to some degree, or there are things that when you do these equations, they don't make much sense. So back onto our PTV thing, get rid of that again. If you do, you can do this in your head, you can do it on a piece of paper. Let's just say we keep temperature constant. This is now our fulcrum. So now we've got our seesaw. And let's just say we increase the volume so we have an expansion. Our pressure will drop because there's a lot more air, a lot, a lot more void for that air to basically traverse. And it has to spread out. And when it does that, pressure is a force on a unit area so your strikes of molecules are going to be less frequent so there's low it's lower pressure you measure the pressure pressure is a measurement so it's just nothing it just doesn't the, the pressure drops not nothing the pressure drops same is true the other way so if we keep that and tip it this way if we reduce the volume like compression we increase the pressure awesome and the very same is the same at the end so you've got ptv like so and we're going to use our volume constant volume so if you have like a bean can or a deodorant can or something like that if you increase the pressure you increase the temperature because they're on this side of the seesaw like that right the relationship between these, and you might have heard this, you might have heard geeky guys saying this, is what's proportional and inversely proportional. So anything that goes up together, so our PTV, when the pressure goes up or the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, um, that is proportional. So when you increase one, the other increases as well. So they're increasing together. Inversely proportional is when the T-tor, uh, the T-tor, the seesaw tips, where if you reduce one, the other goes up. So if you reduce the volume, the pressure goes up. That means the relationship between pressure and volume in that instance with constant temperature is inversely proportional. When one goes up, the other one goes down. Now, the problem with using Bernoulli's principle just as it is like that with the ideal gas and all the rest of it is that we've got a real problem here because when we compress a gas, we're reducing the volume, we are increasing the pressure and increasing the temperature so when you look at that ptv thing it only works just for you to work these things out in a very basic fundamental way now bernoulli's principle does state all this and it's very very complicated but people use this ptv which is only so good because if you're going to keep maintain temperature or keep temperature constant and you increase the pressure decrease the volume there is no mention here of the temperature. You're keeping the temperature constant. This is why these are underlining principles. Now, Bernoulli's principle, there's an entire fucking book that he wrote. Um, and it gets very, very complicated. And that's what I want to try and break down. What I want to do is, instead of just sit here and do equations and all the rest of it, because that's boring as fuck, that's how you calculate stuff. 
it's the understanding that I'm, I'm more interested in. I'm not trying to teach you guys a syllabus or whatever on anything. Um, but my question is, and Dave Macaroni was at it again with his heat and presser. Um, you have a cylinder like this. You have a piston like so. The piston is on its way up. And we compress the mixture. Or it can be just air if it's a diesel. But we are compressing a gas into a smaller volume. The volume here is decreasing. Right? So, the temperature rises. We know this from Bernoulli's yada yada yada, from ideal gas law. Um, so the temperature is increasing. But why? Why is the temperature increasing? And this all comes back down to, what is temperature? Temperature, as I've said time and time again, temperature is energy. All right, so the gas in here that's being compressed is getting energy. But where's this energy coming from? Why is, you know, you can do this with a bike pump. You get a bike pump and you squish it and you can feel it gets hot. Um, an excellent example is a fire piston. So a fire piston is where you put a little, um, what do you call it now? A little scrape into wood. Uh, tin, tinder. Is it tinder? I just don't want to get confused with dating apps. <laughs> is it tinder? Yeah, the, the, the flame between people or whatever they're trying to get at. Yeah, the tinder. You put a bit in it, you go like this, crisp and click spring metal one. You go like that, whack, give it a good whack, and the compression of that gas, just air, will create enough heat to ignite that fuel, basically. That tinder shit is fuel. I don't need very much, and this little piece should work fine. When that's rolled up and placed in the grips of the tinder claw, I'll gently insert the rod into the chamber until the o-ring presses inside. Then with one swift downward stroke, I've got ignition and my tinder is burning. So where is this coming from? The big clue is the fact that you just give it a smack. Because if you get a fire piston and go really, really fucking slow and you use a thermocouple, you could go slow enough you wouldn't see a temperature rise. Well, that's a fucking bit of a problem. The thing is, you've got to remember that it's energy transfer, right? Forget everything else. Forget heat. Heat is heat is just a name that we give to the release of energy, basically. So where's this gas in here getting its energy from? Well, it's coming from the piston. You're pushing it just like a fire piston. You are forcing this piston in. And if I was to do it with a fire piston, go like that. Where's that coming from? Well, that's coming from my Alpha I had this morning. You know, I am having to do work, and this is where thermodynamics come into all of it. But before you switch off, I'm not going to go into all that rubbish. <laughs> but basically, this piston has a mass. Mass, we are shifting it from a state of not moving to a state of moving, which is an acceleration. And mass times acceleration is a force. Now, we've, put, we've had to force this piston up. I'm accelerating my arm. The piston basically absorbs that. If I get something, you know, anything, like just say if this was on a bench or something, and I push it, my body is accelerating, my muscles are accelerating my mass. It's hitting this mass. If I don't have enough um, force, which is that mass times acceleration, then this just stands still and doesn't go anywhere. But I can push against it, push against it, push against it, and it accelerates this mass. Well, that's the same thing that happens here. This air in here, these molecules, where's my pens? These molecules in here, they have mass. They have a mass, and for air, I can't remember, is it 1.028 oh, grams per meter cube? Something like that, if I remember rightly. Is it? Yeah, it's that. <laughs> so it has a mass, is it grams? It is grams, yeah, I'm fucking going mental. Um, these molecules have a mass, and they were sat there whizzing around, <laughs> which is what <laughs> makes it difficult with air. They're sat there whizzing around, they're not sat there. Let's just imagine we're taking a still photo. The molecules are just sat there, they're not moving all to one end, the piston is shoving them, and this is what we call a transfer of momentum. The momentum that this piston has transfers that energy to this gas. Now this gas, these molecules are a lot smaller than this piston. If you move a piston with your hand, it heats up. It will release the excess energy that it can't store. 
as waste heat. But because it's got so much mass, and because the energy we're dumping into it isn't really that high, you will never, ever, ever, ever fucking measure that. But the gas, on the other hand, has been shoved into a corner. It's having to accelerate against which way it's wanting to go. It has to overcome, you have to overcome its inertia, all this rest of it. It's transfer and conservation of momentum. So basically, this gas now, because these are molecules, these are not massive fucking lumps that I can hold of aluminium, these molecules cannot hold that energy. What happens when an atom cannot hold that amount of energy? You're basically jumping it, you know, you're juicing it up too much. It gets rid of it. How does it get rid of it? It creates a photon. It goes, poo, fuck off. And the more energy, poo, 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 it just starts firing out photons. You can see this when you heat up a piece of steel. You are adding so much energy in the form of infrared photons, which is what heat is, into that piece of metal that eventually it has so much energy in it just like a light bulb filament that it starts to shit out so many photons it reaches a level of energy that we can see in that visible spectrum if you keep on going you start getting in for you start getting ultraviolet out of it because it goes beyond our vision just like welding arcs and stuff like that um so the energy level is just what it is that's how much it basically just shits out in photons if you don't believe that photons carry out energy or it's a new thing to you it's how microwaves work microwaves have a microwave frequency a frequency of photons the microwaves it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum it's part of the photon range if you want to put it that way it's horsepower of photons um <laughs> and your microwave makes a beam, it rotates the food through it, but that beam has been tuned to a resonance frequency with water atoms. There's water in your food, these water atoms basically absorb that energy and then start shaking, uh, vibrating, and that causes a release of photons themselves, which are in the infrared, which we call heat. Fucking cowabunga, a microwave has just explained an engine. But basically, where does this heat come from? It's because you're transferring the energy that was dumped into that piston to cause it to accelerate, to cause it to overcome its um, inertia, that is what causes the compression. People say it's the friction between atoms. Atoms don't fucking touch. The atoms in this are not touching. It is part of the exclusion principle of uh, quantum mechanics. Atoms don't touch. Even then, atoms don't have surfaces to touch. They repel each other depending on how much energy you've been dumped into and we're not going to go down that rabbit hole but yeah generally atoms repel each other there's videos like from Vera Tassi and very good videos about do we actually ever touch anything the answer is no we just basically it's like magnets we just repel each all these atoms just repel each other from a distance fucking awesome stuff but anyway you are dumping energy into that gas by going Hur! like I say if you do it really really slowly the same thing is happening but the time is a lot longer like I said, you do it slowly. So when you do it slowly, what's happening is the same thing's happening. The energy of the piston that you're putting into it by accelerating it is putting it into the air. But the air is then liberating that to its surrounding, to all this. It's basically just losing it to all this. And if you go slowly enough, you will never record a temperature increase because it has always been leached away. It has always been leached away to the cylinder walls there, you know. So you'd have to have some serious temperature uh, measuring capabilities. Basically thermometers, thermocouples, these are all energy measuring devices. Um, but in the form of heat, they, spe they basically they specialise in the thermal range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So that's why, that's why when you compress a gas, so this is obviously right important because this means that when you increase your RPM and your piston is being accelerated faster and faster, your temperatures will get higher and higher and higher. This is why, is one of the reasons why, is that engines get hotter the higher you rev them, right? Because they're burning the same amount of fuel, or they should be theoretically, every single stroke. And yes, your air fuel ratio mixtures go up, but if you have a look at your temperatures, your cylinder temperatures will go higher and higher and higher, even though you've passed peak torque. As soon as you pass peak torque, combustion is basically losing out. You are not as efficient at combusting because that's why your torque is dropping off, because the 
um, the, the temperature in your cylinder due to combustion is not as good. Your engine isn't breathing as well. It's now peaked off and now it's getting fucking knackered. And, you know, it basically you're running out of time that your valve is open to get your, your volumetric efficiency is dropping off. You're not filling your cylinders as best as you were at peak torque. But your temperatures will still keep on rising. That's because your RPMs are still going, even though you've passed peak torque. Your RPMs are still going higher, 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 which means your compression is really fucking quick. It's getting quicker and quicker as that your compression, the compression time for compressing this gas is directly proportional to your RPM. Hope that makes sense. Hope that didn't go over people's heads. There's probably loads of questions and there's probably an easier way to explain this. <laughs> and I'll do a follow-up if it's required. Hope that makes sense. Hope I make sense. And I'll see you in a bit.